Are we live? I believe so. Okay. Wow. Welcome to Kitchen Karate Live, Meal Prep Live. So uh, I'm here with my wife and our little baby girl, Lucille, back there. So you're going to hear some sounds and some cries and some squeals going on in the background. Don't be alarmed. Everything is fine. So, um, And hopefully my wife is going to continue to chat with me throughout this whole thing, keep me uh, on point to make sure I don't stray and go other places. We're trying to work out a lot of technical stuff all at the same time. This is the first time we've ever done a live broadcast. Uh, we've shot in here many times. Um, this is where we do all of the, uh, the, the cook-along videos for the course. Um, so we're comfortable in here, but not doing a live stream and we're using a, a new webcam. So I might not be in perfect focus the whole time, um, but hopefully you can see, hopefully you can hear, hopefully you are ready to kick some food butt. Um, so we've got until 10 o'clock to get ourselves set up and ready to go for our two hour active cooking session. So I want you to get yourself into chop position first and foremost. So you've got until 10 o'clock to get into chop position. Now, what do I mean by chop position? Hopefully you've read the guides and know what I mean by chop position. But chop position is being ready to chop through all of your ingredients for the chop move. So the chop move is the first 40 minutes of the two hour active cooking event. And we need to be ready to spring to action at 10 o'clock. So um, one thing I'll tell you before I go ahead and set up myself for, for chop is that I am not going to be cooking uh, any ingredients. I'm going to be just going through the motions with you, keeping you on point, doing timers, making sure you uh, keep the pace up. Um, that is different than what's going to be done in the, in the, the, the full course, the cook along course in those, I actually do give you um, shopping lists. I give you the meal plan and we run through the cook with actual live ingredients and you get to see everything step by step. Now I know I've read you the riot act about shopping lists and following recipes and meal plans and stuff. But this is different. Um, it is a training exercise. The cook along course that I have put together, the 10 lessons that bring you up to black belt. Those are training lessons. So they are not meant to be something that you do over and over and over again for the rest of your life. You do them until you uh, get it. And then you're free to ride wherever you want in the world. So, um, so that's the paradox there. So here, this is what we call a uh, freestyle in the cook along course. And this would be you pick the ingredients yourself and then you just go through the process step by step. You go through the process of chop, sprinkle, and poke. So that is the uh, three hour active cooking thing. Um, one other thing I'll note is that there's gonna be five minute breaks, one at the end of the first 40 minutes, and one uh, 35 minutes later. So right at the end of uh, chop, right at the end of sprinkle, and then at the end of poke, we will um, have an hour long Q and A. So that's while you're cleaning up and packing and cooling down and everything. That'll be a good time to ask um, all the, the broader questions. Those five minute breaks are when you can jump on the computer and ask me um, specific questions about any moves, or you can do that anytime uh, you want to. Just stop down and type us a message. My uh, lovely wife, who's in the back room changing our lovely daughter, will um, be moderating. She'll let me know when questions come up and I will answer them on air to camera here. So um, I think this is gonna be fun. I think it's gonna be fast. It's going to be furious. My goal is to help you keep your pace up. I want you to stay active. You know, the only thing that should be limiting how fast you go is safety. So don't want you to cut yourself. Don't want you to burn yourself. Those are the two main hazards, but I want you to go as fast as you can. Otherwise, uh, speed is of the essence. So um, let's get ourselves into chop position. We've got a few minutes to uh, get ready before it happens. So chop position means You've got your cutting board out. Make sure you have your cutting board out and your knife. I've got my, uh, my cheat sheet here. I'm just putting it out of the way. Um, have your cutting board out. Have your chef's knife out. 
And then you want to have all the bowls and containers that you were going to put your chopped up ingredients in, right? Um, the other thing you want to make sure is that you have space clear. So this is what I call the ingredient staging area. You know, for me, I have it right under our meal planner, which uh, helps us keep track of things. But if you don't have something like this printed out yet, don't worry about it. As you chop things up, you're just going to throw it in the ingredient, ingredient staging area over here. And, um, but you just need to make sure that you have a good amount of space. This is 36 inches wide and I, I'm able to use it for all 15 meals for two people. So I stack it, stack it to the, uh, to the gills over here. So you need this area and you need a, a space where you are chopping. Now I, I'm doing this presenting the camera, but ideally you would actually have it right next to your, your sink, right? So you can take things out of the bath and put it in here. You also want to make sure that you have out your trash can and your recycling bin and have it right next to you where you're chopping, right? So cutting board, knife, um, trash bins, receptacles, and then you want your bowls. So I have a big stack of these bad boys here, and this is what I put all of my chopped up ingredients in, uh, all the produce that is. I separate my produce, my plant matter, from the meats. And the meats I do with uh, metal mixing bowls, like this. And I keep those right there. And then I also usually have one for, um, this is for my compost, or what might go into uh, a veggie stock. Um, so I keep that there so that I don't have to keep um, moving around. I can just chop things up and get rid of the refuse right there. So as I chop things up, they go into the containers. The containers go over here. So you, that's what we'll be doing during the chop move. So make sure you get yourself into chop position here and before 10 o'clock so we can spring to action. Now, if you want to, you can also use another area um, for your, your ingredients before they get chopped up. So put out all your groceries here. Now, I would say to you, do not get out your um, plant matter. I mean, don't get out your uh, meats. Get only your plant matter out, right? So leave all the meats, the chickens, beefs, all that stuff in the refrigerator until we get to the point where we're going to chop up the meats, right? We do it in order. We're going to do all our plant matter first, and then we are going to do the meat. So you can uh, just put all the plant matter out here. That's all your produce, all your vegetables, any seasonings that you're going to have. Try to get those out, get them out of the fridge, get them ready uh, for action, all right? So um, we've got a good uh, five minutes before we begin. I just want to make sure that you have time to get set up, get into chop position. Um, the other thing you should be thinking about is getting your, uh, get your mobile device set up. So how are you able to hear and, and you know, um, follow along with me as you go through this uh, exercise here. So we're going to be, we have a, well, hi, Lucille. You want to come and say hello? Let's say hi real quick. I might want a bottle. You might want a bottle? There's one in the fridge. Okay. Well, look at this. Well, look at here. Hi. Say hi to the people. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to do some cooking. Sure. I know. Meal prep time again. Fine. Fun. You want yourself a little bottle? Is that what I heard? You want a little bottle? Let's get it. I don't know if you have one of these. I highly recommend it. They're great around the house. Aren't you? Oh, the sweetheart. So she's hanging out with mommy, who's also our, our cameraman and our moderator for this entire event. So when you're typing in any questions, um, you'll be hearing from her. Good. Um, so we'll be getting going here in about uh, four minutes. So make sure you get into chop position. Make sure that you've got your mobile device set up in a way that um, you can follow along throughout the whole thing. And, How are uh, you timing? And the way we're going to um, time is uh, I'm just going to be using a, a kitchen timer. You can set timers in your own kitchen as I call it out. So you're going to get a five minute interval of this a 10 minute interval of that, and you're gonna, you know, fit,
do that action in that amount of time. So I will be calling out the time, but you could set the timer yourself. You know, this brings up the point that, um, you know, ideally do not pause the, uh, the, the camera. So don't pause the, the video. Just try to keep up, you know, so you might have to leave some of your wounded behind. So let's say you're chopping through stuff and I say, no, move on to the, you know, to the next thing that you're chopping. Um, and you haven't gotten through everything and there's a few minutes left of stuff. I say, sorry, move on from those, put those back in the fridge. You get to deal with those later in the week. What we want to do is make sure that the stuff that you do process through this gets done all the way to the end successfully. So we want the, the pieces that come out at the end to be chopped up nicely, seasoned well, cooked well. And we don't want you to fall behind because you're trying to, you know, um, keep up with the stragglers. That five minute break at the end of chop, that might be a time for you to, to salvage some stuff, but it might be a bathroom break. It might be a time for you to deal with your own kids. Um, it might be a, a time for you to get uh, cleaned up um, from whatever goes on in your, your kitchen here. So um, that's, that's it about the, uh, how the timers are going to work. A um, couple of last uh, things before we get underway. At the end of this, um, I will be holding a Q and A, as I said, and after this whole thing, I'm going to send out a um, survey of this whole course, the crash course, this cook along. And it would be um, great if you could fill that out. And I'm going to incentivize you even further. I am going to put a 20% discount for the full cook along course at the end of that survey. So fill out the survey. You'll get a discount code. That discount code will be um, active for one week. Um, if you've already uh, paid for the course, and um, you want to get that discount, fill out the survey and then email me the discount code and I'll refund you the 20% of your, uh, your purchase. So um, hopefully that'll get you in there and give me that feedback that I need to keep making this course as powerful as it can be. So um, I believe that is everything I need to cover. Yeah, 10 a.m. And it's 10 a.m. All right, time to get shopping. So. Uh, the first thing we're going to do, you've got five minutes and I'm going to set a uh, kitchen timer here for five minutes. Five minutes is the amount of time that you have to get all of your groceries, the produce that is, not the meats that you're leaving in the fridge, but get all the produce that you have into the bath. So that would be in your sink. You're going to run some water, put a stopper in there um, and fill a bath with water, get all the produce that you're going to chop up in there so you can get it washed all at one time, right? And if you want to get an extra cleaning power, then maybe you're going to put in some, uh, you're going to put in some, you know, white vinegar. You can put a cap full or two in there um, to help disinfect it or wash it. You could also uh, chop up um, some citrus, a lemon or a lime and squeeze that in there. I just use water when I wash. I put it in the bath. I, shake it all up, I'll run some water over it when I take it back out. Um, but get everything that you can in the bath over here. Now, um, anything with rinds, you know, you don't need to put in. So, you know, your bananas and your oranges, you don't need to wash that because you're gonna peel that off and it's safe inside. Anything that is, um, you know, packaged and says that it's pre-washed, I generally trust them. I trust them down at the plant that they they wash that stuff and that it's clear, but you can also just take that out of the packaging and dump it in the bath as well. I put pretty much everything in. Um, I put all the leafy greens and I put uh, my berries and, and fruits in there. I know that um, some people feel like you wash things and it makes that so that it, it um, you know spoils faster. Um, that may be true. Uh, you can pat it dry um, or you can eat them faster in the week. Just eat the things that you think might go bad um, sooner in the week. So will you be washing your celery? Will I be washing myself? <laughs> My wife is reminding me that I have some celery to demonstrate uh, for you for the chop move. Um, just so we can review knife skills for anybody who needs that. Um, and I can wash some celery if that's going to make a, make a difference here. So, um, you know, I, like I said, I just run everything under just plain regular water. So hopefully you're 
spending your time. Not a, uh, a diligent walker, I have to tell you the truth. Um, but hopefully you're spending your time getting yourself into chop position and having all of your ingredients in uh, the bath here. So um, you've got a few more minutes to get that together. And um, I'm going to keep letting you uh, work on that. Um, if you have uh, grains that you're going to be doing, um, make sure that you get your grains and beans out as well. So, um, you know, just have them out and handy, all the ones that you're going to use, whether it's the, uh, you know, the wraps or, or breads, or if it's the, the whole grains like your, your lentils and your, uh, your brown rice and stuff. I'll get some of those out as well. Because I'm going to demonstrate something here in the next five minutes that will show you how to portion out your grains um, pretty quickly and easily. I've got out uh, brown rice, barley, steel cut oats, and uh, I don't know, some organic pasta, uh, some yeah, whole grain pasta. We'll have that out there so we can take a look at how we're going to portion out our um, our grains. Checking my sheet here. So, got another minute. Make sure you get everything washed and ready for the chop move. Your grains are out um, and everything is sort of organized and ready for action here so we can progress. Um, in a timely manner. And you, you'll see here um, that I don't, uh, I, I really emphasize doing one thing at a time, right? Instead of trying to do multiple things all at the same time. There's a couple of things where we're going to spend more than one plate at the same time, but the more you can stay focused on one particular task, the faster you're going to get through that. So, you know, washing all of your ingredients, what's great about that um, is that you get everything that you need washed for the week wash all at once, which is a lot faster than, you know, for instance, throughout the week, the normal way would be every time it's time to wash something, you got to pull it out, go to the sink, get it, get the sink cleared, wash the thing, uh, dry it off and do that 15 different times here. You just throw it all in and it's done once. So our timer's up. We're going to set another five minutes. And now it's time for us to get our um, grains and our beans going. So for all the people who are doing grains and beans, um, this, is this is your time. So uh, I want to show you how to portion out um, grains and beans if you are using measuring cups um, or a rice cooker or something. If you're cooking those ways, just get that done. Just jump to action and start doing that. But if you want to see how to measure things out and portion things out by hand, um, you can check out this demonstration here. So you've got your pot and then you've got your, um, your grain. So I, I actually put a label maker on my grains container that tells me the ratio. It's uh, this steel cut oats is three to one. And that's the only thing I put on my, my grains. So um, three to one, that tells me I need three parts water to one part grains. Right, and then other ones are two to one, some are four to one, um, but this one is three to one. So, um, as I say, you want to do um, a good rule of thumb is a closed handful is one serving for one person, right? A family size hand, you have to figure out how big that is or do, you know, three quick ones per, you know, family. Um, and you get that in there. This is different than just saying, oh, a cup of this, a cup of that, which you can do. That's fine if you want to do that, it's a little faster. Um, but if you want to get more precise about your serving sizes and really kind of control how much grains you're, you're eating, then you'd want to do it by hand like this. So you, you fill one, two, three. So that, that for me is three servings of um, steel cut oats. And so what am I going to do here? I've got this filled and I haven't measured it except by hand. Well, what you have is this cool um, measuring device called your, your hand and your finger in particular, which has all these um, little notches on it that you can use to me uh, measure things. So you can get a visual indication. So let's say I put my finger in the bottom of the bowl here and it comes to, you know, half, 
halfway up my fingernail. All right, so that's how much it is. Now that's one. So if I want three to one, then I need to go one, two, three. That's three times as much, so that would be four total. Right, so that's one, that's the actual grain. Then there's two, then three, then four. So somewhere in that ballpark is where you want to fill the water up to. So you would just put your finger in there and you would run the water under it until the water comes up to that point. And that would tell you you have three parts water, one part grains, right? And then you get that on the, the stove right now. The, the, this is one of the very few things where you're going to multitask, right? You're, if you're doing grains, you want to get those going now so that they're done um, by the time you, we get to the poke move. Because you don't want to be using up your whole stove top cooking grains because they take about 40 minutes now. Uh, or 20 minutes, 30, 40, whatever, however much you're doing. Now, um, I don't use any lids uh, and with grains. Um, lids are there to, uh, I know, heresy, right? But lids are there for um, to, to speed up the process. And you don't need to speed up the process. What you need is to keep eyes on the process. So I don't like to have lids in the way. It creates more stuff that you have to fight for counter space with when you put the lids down, more hot things to handle. Just keep the lids off. And you could have, you know, four grains going all at the same time um, filled up the way that we just demonstrated. And um, you just bring them to a boil. And then once you see that they're boiling, set them to simmer. And I'll try to remind you to turn them to simmer while we're, we're chopping up our produce. So just keep bring them up to a boil, set them to simmer, and then you'll keep eyes on it. Um, once the liquid's all gone, should be cooked if the ratio is correct. And the ratio is, is on your bag, you know, or the, the box that they came in, that, that tells you the ratio. If it's, you know, th one cup to, to three cups, you'll, you'll see what it's telling you to do. So have that, if, as far as your beans, um, you just wanna make sure you get them out of their cans, or, uh, you know, if, if you're cooking them, then um, you'd be doing the same kind of thing you're doing with these, uh, the grains. Um, you want to um, decide if you're gonna like send beans through the, you know, the seasoning and cooking process. I often leave my grains and my beans um, cooked, but unseasoned. And they make their way into the plate at the end and, um, and they absorb all the seasonings and flavors of the, of the other ingredients. I don't necessarily season them, but sometimes I do. Um, you can easily send the beans through if you have them in cans and they're already cooked. So, all right, our timer has gone off. Now it is time to get a chopping. So I'm gonna give you 15 minutes. Make sure we're doing the right thing. Yeah, 15 minutes. You've got 15 minutes to chop up all of your produce. Okay, so you've got all your produce, that's your vegetables, any fruit that you're gonna chop, you don't have to chop fruit, but any um, vegetables, so not the seasoning, so not your onions or your garlic or your fresh herbs or your lemon or lime, but everything else that's going to make its way into your meals that you're preparing for this week. Get them out of the bath, bring them over to your uh, cutting board one at a time, chop them, chop them up, and get them into um, a container and put them in your staging area. You don't have to worry right now about how you're organizing them as meals. Uh, just chop them up and throw them over there. And uh, we can deal with how they're gonna get organized as meals later. So you guys get a chopping. I'm just gonna put this stuff away, clear the decks. water. I guess I'm, I'm going to be talking a lot through this whole thing. <laughs> now, um, hopefully you've seen the, uh, the knife skills video. I'm sure you're busy chopping, but 
just to keep reminding you, um, you want a good firm grip on your, your chef's knife and you want to make sure that you're keeping a good claw with your, with your, uh, with your other hand, the one that's holding the ingredients down. So the claw, you know, it just comes, lowers down like that, uh, that game at the, uh, the arcade where the, the claw comes down and it hits and it just bends a little bit at the tip there where the fingers hit. And, um, that, that is what you use to press down on the product. So, um, I wouldn't want to see anybody like this turn this way, holding it like this, where you got your thumb out. You want to keep your thumb behind the knife guard, which is your hand right here. So you can put it right next to it, or you can keep your hand away from the, uh, the knife right next to it or here. But no matter what you do, keep your thumb back there. Keep the little parts of your fingers curled under. And you uh, go tip down and you push through. Push through, push through, push through, push through. And you just keep doing that with a nice rhythm. Just go as slow as you need to, to stay safe. But um, you know you want to be keeping your pace up. So you don't need to um, get it super fine tuned, but you do want to try to get um, roughly the same size cuts uh, so that everything cooks down at, the, at an even rate. Um, but more importantly, you just want to keep getting through those um, ingredients. And if you're new to using your knife or, or the claw, just keep reminding yourself every few cuts, chop, chop, check my claw, chop, chop, check my claw, chop, chop, check my claw. Is it safe? And just stay engaged, stay focused on, on your chop. Just keep moving through stuff. And as you finish things up, just put them in a, in a bowl like that and put your bowl over here. Um, now, if you don't have uh, a million bowls like this or Tupperware or anything, then um, what you want to be using is your handy dandy tin foil, right? So here you just break off a piece of tin foil and you create a little bowl just like that. And so your ingredients would, would go in these little tinfoil boats. So this would replace this, it would replace this, and you'll be creating a whole mess of little tinfoil boats over here with, uh, with all of your ingredients. And what's great about that is, um, you know, it's easy, it's low cost, uh, it cleans up very fast. You can season directly in these little tinfoil boats, you can cook in them. Um, which is great, and uh, and like I said, you can throw them away. You can even you know st um, store in them, but then you do want to put them into um, uh, a plastic container or a glass container, um, and you can reheat in them. So it's very much like uh, like Pyrex, um, except for uh, it costs about a, a one penny a, a sheet. Um, the downside to using these uh, tinfoil boats is that. Um, you're creating a lot of uh, trash for the environment, um, and they don't store all that well. And you're then you're cooking in tinfoil all the time, which things stick to, and um, it's not as it's not as pleasing as uh, as Pyrex. That's for sure. Pyrex is a very um, uh, the, uh, the, doesn't have to be Pyrex, but the rectangular glass containers are very you know um, nice and pleasing to use. So just kind of build that up over time as you get more and more into your meal prepper. Um, but this is a great low cost entry solution to get your yourself in it. So I'm gonna pretend that I am, you know, washing stuff up. I would be taking things out of the sink here, shaking them off, go like this, putting them on my cutting board, one at a time, one ingredient at a time and I would be chopping things up. So slice, slice, claw, slice, slice, claw, slice, slice, claw, slice, slice, claw. Just keep checking that claw. That's what's going to keep you safe more than anything. So um, keep the speed up and keep checking that claw. Have any uh, questions come in, moderator? No. No yet. questions from the crowd. You can ask questions uh, about this. I can demonstrate something if you if you need. If there's some um, 
thing that you're struggling with with your knife skills that you want me to you know talk about more in detail or about your organization or you know the process or where, what you're doing right now which is getting through all that produce uh, for the week go ahead and hit us with a question otherwise you are just chop chop checking your claw and you're creating in your staging area you can just put them all together all right that's how you cut them just put them put them over there as a as a pile Okay. And I will drink some water. Stay hydrated. You've got to stay hydrated, people. Hopefully you're you're all fueled up. You've had your coffee, your food. You had a good night's rest. You're focused. You're on point here. One thing out. Okay. okay, you've got uh, seven minutes left out there to get all of your produce chopped up. So we're just focused on produce. Just get all of your your vegetables chopped up. And, you know, as I said in the lessons, the size of the, the cuts is, uh, you know, about the, the width of, uh, of your finger is gonna be good um, for a good bite-sized piece. Uh, the root vegetables, um, you can maybe cut smaller if you want them to cook at the same speed as the soft vegetables. Um, you can do a rough chop of things. Um, you don't have to get everything. Uh, just right. Like I said, you know, if you got some uncooked bits with some overcooked bits. You just call it rustic. It's a it's a beautiful thing. It's very gourmet of you to uh, make it all rustic. So um, don't be too focused on trying to get everything just right. The important thing is that you get everything cut and moved over to your ingredient staging area so that you can keep moving forward with the whole thing. Um, that goal is to make this meal prep process as condensed as possible to do the least you need to do uh, as efficiently as possible to set yourself up for good eating throughout the week and then as you get better and better at your meal prep you are going to grow into it you're going to do it uh, faster and faster so your knife skills are going to get faster the more you keep chopping through these ingredients you know you're going to be spending you know 30 minutes uh, each week practicing your knife skills. So that's gonna be great, great practice for you. So um, it's a really good idea now to stay very uh, focused on it, to um, give it the time it needs to uh, get the technique right, you know, that you've got to tip down, that you're pushing through, pulling back, pushing through, pulling back, pushing through, pulling back, and checking your claw, and going as slowly as you need to go to um, get that done. So um, just uh, keep working at your, um, at, your, at your chop and get that produce done. I'm going to take a little break myself just because uh, I'm yap, yap, yapping and let you do your thing here for a minute. Check in on my baby. Some coffee. Man. A little, uh, little Lucille break over here. She's in the in the game. My wife is asking for some coffee back there. The staff needs to get fueled up. That's good. And that's enough coffee for all of us here. <laughs> There you go. Uh, have to split it all up. How do you think they're doing out there? They haven't commented, so we don't know. How are you doing? How are you doing out there? Tell us. 
How's it going out in Livesville? <laughs> yeah. Who's that? Is that mommy behind the camera? Yeah. Good. So you've got three minutes left to get everything chopped up. So everything should be um, out of the bath by the time this three minutes is over, and, except for any um, seasonings. But most seasonings don't go in the bath to begin with so, because they've got their outer rinds that you're um, going to be cutting through. So um, keep processing through, getting them over here. Um, if you're ahead of the game, if you've already chopped up uh, your produce for the week, and let's say you've got uh, two servings of produce for uh, per meal, you might spend a little time looking at what you've got over here and deciding what's going to go with what. So for instance, you might say, huh, I've got a serving of tomatoes and a serving of mushrooms. Seeing it now chopped up, you know what, I want to season those two together. That's going to be part of the same meal. So you can put those together, right? You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that now. You don't have to do that in the sprinkle move or, or during poke. You can do that all the way at the end of the entire process when it's time to plate up your meals one at a time. They can be just stored as individual components in your refrigerator. Or um, if you're ahead of the game and you've got the time because you've got wicked fast knife skills, then you could actually start, you know, playing a little bit of the puzzle game and figuring out what's going to go with what. You could do that with some of the um, meals, some of the ingredients, uh, but not all of them. So um, if some just jump out at you and they say, yeah, you're going to go together, you're going together, you're going together, go ahead and stack them up, put them together so that you know that you want to season them in a uniform way when we get to the sprinkle move, right? And then the other ones can just be a la carte. So they're just, they're, they're the danglers. So you can start building meals over there in your ingredient staging area, or you, know, you can just leave it undone. But the important thing is right now is to get, well, what is it? What is the important thing right now? The important thing right now is to get everything chopped up, isn't it? You get everything chopped up and over into your ingredient staging area so that we can move on to our seasonings, which is gonna happen in about 45 seconds. We're gonna Should move we on. wash our seasonings? We don't need to wash our seasonings. Um, lemons, like limes, herbs? onions. Um, if you have fresh herbs, then uh, you do wanna give them a rinse. So you can dump them in the, in the sink and shake them off, or you can just run it under the sink and uh, shake it off um, uh, when you get to the seasonings. But, I wouldn't necessarily put those in the bath and let them sit there. I would just have those on deck. Um, and we're gonna do seasonings in about 10 seconds. All right, here she comes. Hi. All right, so hopefully you're getting done with your chopping of main ingredients. And it's time to turn our attention to we got five minutes to get our seasonings done. So this is where you're gonna uh, chop up those onions and cry a little bit if you did not buy pre-diced onions. Um, so you wanna get a, you know, a, a whole onion chop, maybe two diced up. You know, we showed you the mince move, um, which is hand on top and you're gonna mince through things and just keep breaking it down. I'm not gonna demonstrate with an onion because I, I don't like to cry. On, on camera. Well, you know what the trick is, right? The trick to not crying is to wear contacts. Well, it's not to get too attached. <laughs> <laughs> the trick with not crying with onions is to not get too attached to them. Uh, so this is mincing. You're just going to mince it up, hand on top, and you go back and forth across the, the product until it breaks down. And how minced do you want to get? Just till it's a sprinkly bit. Just as sprinkly as you like, and you can make it as small as you want. With onions, they might as well be pretty, you know, thick, thickly chopped, you know, little pieces like that. You're going to put them on. Um, slice up any lemons or limes that you have into wedges so that you can squeeze them um, onto your products. And, and now you're going to be starting to build um, your sprinkle station, right? So that means that you're going to start putting um, your seasonings into small bowls. So 
you know, I have little bowls like this. Um, again, you can use tinfoil if you want to, um, but get your onions into a small bowl, get your garlic chopped up and put into a small bowl next to it. Put your lemon and lime wedges into little bowls like this as well um, and put them out and around wherever your, your sprinkle station is going to be. That's ideally uh, your sprinkle station will be where your chop station is now. So you can really just kind of put them right in front of the, the cutting board between the cutting board and the end, you know, the backsplash is where your seasoning should start stacking up. Right. So you've finished with your produce. Now you're um, knocking out the seasonings. You've got a little more space here um, to put your seasonings. I would go ahead as well and make sure that you get your, um, your salt and your pepper. I have to keep my salt and my pepper in little pinch bowls like this. Um, they're pretty much out all the time, you know, uh, so that whenever we want to uh, whip anything up, you know, between uh, throughout, throughout the week, we've always got them uh, quick and ready. Um, they don't go bad. They can sit out like that, no problem. And, but here you want to put those in your, your sprinkle station. So this five minutes is really about starting to build up that, that sprinkle station and make sure that you get through all of the plant matter that's out, right? Um, I don't have my, uh, my grains going. Hopefully you do. Um, I did not mention to turn them down to, to a simmer, but hopefully you noticed that. If they have been boiling away this whole time, that's still not going to be uh, a problem for you. They're just going to be cooked faster. The, the, the water will go away faster. You have more of a chance that they are going to be overcooked, but um, get it down to a simmer um, and let that just keep going until all the water is evaporated. Um, have uh, olive oil out. It's worth getting um, your olive oil out as well during this, just to get make sure that when you move on to the sprinkle move, you have everything, um, all the starting five, salt, pepper, olive oil, and it doesn't have to be olive oil. It can be butter, it can be ghee, it can be coconut oil, it can be sesame oil, whatever your oil of choice may be, um, your, your, your A game. You might have a variety of oils that you'd like to have out. Go ahead and pull all three of them out, four out. Have a bunch of oils out um, that you want to use, you know, when it's time to throw the oil on of the starting five in the sprinkle move there. But um, salt, pepper, olive oil, onion, garlic, if you have it. Um, you don't have to have both onion and garlic. Obviously, you, you have what you have. This is, uh, we're, you're, you're cooking with what you got there. So, um, you know, onion and garlic are very kind of similar. Uh, they're in the same family, two different flavors of the same thing. So um, I like to use both, but uh, you can use one or the other just as well, um, or neither. If you don't like that, that's not your, your bag, baby. Just don't do it. Um, so keep chopping through your, your seasonings. I generally do my, um, my garlic last uh, because it's, it's a powerful thing that goes on the cutting board and then the other ingredients might pick up the garlic. So hopefully you've got uh, the, the kind of garlic that's, um, that's already peeled. If you've never seen this before, let me just show it to you real quick. Um, that's a good garlic to get yourself into instead of crashing, cracking those bulbs yourself, right? So our timer just went off. So hopefully you're done with your um, getting your seasonings and your starting five prepped. And now it is time to uh, get our meats done, right? So you've got 10 minutes. And then after this 10 minutes, you get a five minute break. So keep with it. Um, and uh, hopefully you've, you've gotten through your produce, gotten through your seasonings. Um, if you haven't, Set it aside. Let's get the meats chopped up first, and then if you can, you got any free time there, you can loop back in and and finish up any any produce or seasonings. But um, definitely want to get this all everything chopped by the end of this forty minutes, right? So with your meats, um, you you now kind of get the you want to change out your cutting board, right? So you want to switch to your uh, non-porous cutting board. And ideally, what you do is you actually um, wash and put this one away, you know. So this is the concept of always be cleaning. You just give that a, a rinse and get it uh, cleared off. If you've got um, dish rags, 
It's always cool to keep a dish rag over your shoulder like a real chef there. Um, keep that there. And have that away and be down to your non-porous cutting boards for your meats. Now, um, ideally, you cut through your chicken last. So grab any meats that's not your chicken uh, first and do the chicken last. The reason is um, you're using your the same knife to chop through everything. And chicken needs to get up to 165 degrees to, to you know, be safe. And everything else is less than that. So your knife can go through things um, that don't need to get up to 165 before it gets to the chicken, but it, not the reverse, right? So if there's something bad in your chicken, you don't want to slice through that and then slice through, say, your fish that you're only going to bring up to you know, 125 or 135, if you follow me. So go through the meats, go through the, uh, I mean, the, the, the red meats and the, the white fish first, and then get down to the chicken and the pork and the chicken. So um, just I generally take every, all the meats out. I put them right near me uh, next to the cutting board, um, and I start going through. And you can either portion it out um, as one whole ser serving, you know, and cook it as a palm-sized piece, or you can go through the process of actually slicing the meats up into, um, you know, bite-sized pieces and cook it that way. That would be more of your stir-fry approach as opposed to your roasting approach, right? So um, Craig is asking, what about soaking beans? What about soaking beans? I guess because you can soak lentils and. Yeah, if that is, um, if you're asking about like uh, you bought it in bulk and it's they're they're uncooked, um, uh, I do not personally soak the beans ahead of time. I know that people do; they'll do it the night before. Uh, they'll soak it and then rinse it off, and maybe even rinse it off two or three times to get the. Some, some kind of bitterness or taste off. I've never um, done that or had that problem. I like the way the, the beans taste, um, but I don't need to wash them off. So We buy um, them canned also. Our Most beans, well, lentils, uh, we, oh, buy, dry. we buy dry, and we just put it in the water, and we cook it. Um, but the beans, we um, often we buy them in cans, and they're already you know cooked. But um, I believe those would work the same way. But the, Soaking it overnight is a good idea to soften them up and, and uh, rinse it off. So, does that answer the question? Hopefully. <laughs> we'll and see. somebody was asking if we're doing the meats yet, but I think now they know that um, we've done the produce. We've done produce. We've done seasonings. Now you should be chopping through your meats, and there now you'll be going into your um, your other bowls. I don't like to put uh, meats into the plastic containers myself. You can, um, but then you got to really make sure that you uh, wash these really good. Um, and this is just a, a better, uh, it's an easier thing to get cleaned. There's no way it's going to uh, soak in. Um, and it's also just delineates it, you know, because you want to keep your, um, for cross-contamination, you want to keep the, the, the meats separate from the, the produce and so this can go right on top of, of your produce but like I said you can put the meats right into a, a little tin foil boat and just do everything um, individually so each serving should go into its own um, tin foil boat so and by a serving I mean either for one or for a family right so a serving size is either an individual serving size or a family serving size but a serving is you know for one meal as opposed to doing all of, uh, you know, like a, the whole, all your chicken breasts. Because if you don't break it up into different servings, then you don't have a chance to season them in different ways when we get to the sprinkle moon. So take the time to go from one, uh, you know, take the time to break them up into individual servings. So you give yourself the opportunity to season them in different ways. And then as you're chopping through, you know, you want to be, you know, making sure that you're um, wiping things down, keeping things clean. You know, take the time at every every so often to just, you know, make sure that you get the, the cutting board washed off and um, wipe down and, and start again, right? And you can wipe off the, the countertop. You want to be making sure that you're keeping things um, clean and sane in your chop area as you go through all of this. 
So you've got four minutes to, to get through all of your, your meats. Um, eggs, uh, if you're dealing with eggs, you know, um, some of the eggs are ones that you're going to bake or scramble. Those you should actually crack right now. That's you processing the, the eggs. So crack those into your bowls, whatever it is, get those out and still do those in servings. So how many eggs is one serving? Two eggs, one egg, three eggs. Crack that into an individual thing that you can season up individually. If you're hard boiling it or poaching it, then just put the whole eggs into a container. This is all part of just separating out all of the individual components and getting them you know, all done and accounted for and making sure you have enough of each of the components. So it is worth taking the step to say, I am gonna say, okay, this that's one serving of eggs, that's another serving of eggs, that's another serving of eggs. Actually go through the process of separating them rather than just taking a whole carton of eggs and throwing it over into your staging area, right? Excuse me. It's a lot of talking. And I like talking, but this is quite a lot. Um, when I'm uh, doing the, um, the, the, the videos for the cook along course, uh, because I'm actually making the stuff, uh, it feels like the time flies by a lot more. It's, uh, it's more difficult to do it without uh, the ingredients and stuff. So I hope I'm being clear for you guys about what it is that you're supposed to be doing at each of these phases. But most importantly, um, you know, you're going through the process. And that's the main thing is that you are seeing um, the steps of going through chop, how to do it in order so that you get through the produce first, then you do your meats to separate the cross contamination issue and that you get everything into a staging area in individual serving sizes um, so that you can see the power of doing one thing at a time as opposed to having your seasonings out having a bunch of stuff cooking checking you know your recipes and making sure that you're checking off all the ingredients you can just focus on getting your your meats portioned out right at this time so hopefully you're getting your uh, your fish your pork chicken, your eggs, um, or your meat substitutes. If you're doing tofu or tempeh, or maybe you're using beans as your meat substitute. So you'd be putting those um, into their containers that, that would, you know, be your meat um, container with your beans. It kind of helps you say, yes, that's my protein source. That's what I've designated for this meal is my protein source. So creating a visual system for yourself so that you're actually identifying like, yeah, that's, I've got my two servings of produce. I got my one serving of meats. Um, the grains, uh, as, as they get finished up, you know, which can be all happening throughout this whole thing, you'll see the, the, the liquids are gone. You turn off the heat and then let it cool for a little bit and actually use your, you know, your, your spoon and get those into a, a storage container. And often I just, I don't separate out the, the grains um, as servings into individual serving containers. I put them in a serving container that I then you grab from throughout the week. So if I have my four servings of rice, they're all in one container. So as I said, I'm not seasoning those individually. They are going to absorb the seasonings of the meal that they are combined with. So um, just get them done and out of the way. So there you go. Uh, that's 40 minutes of chop. So right now, I want you to um, put your knives down, put your hands up, be done with chop. Uh, you've got a five minute break, so do whatever you need to do um, and get uh, yourself to a place where the chop move is behind you. So um, you're gonna wanna wash your non-porous uh, cutting board, your knife, you're gonna wanna put those away. Um, before we get into sprinkle. When we come back from the five minute break, you will um, then get set up for sprinkle and I'll show you how to get set up for that move. So finish it up. Anything that didn't get chopped for whatever reason, if you've got too much stuff, just take it, put it back in the refrigerator, all right? It's gonna be 
perfectly fine. It'll be waiting for you there. It's it's uh if it's gonna make you know some of the meals um, harder to put together at meal time, but you're gonna be so far ahead of the game because you did chop up so many things and get so many things seasoned to cook. That one little thing is gonna be something that's easy to throw together at the week. So hopefully that's not your situation. Hopefully you have chopped through everything, um, but if not, you gotta leave some of the, the wounded behind and move forward. So we'll be back in uh, four minutes and we will uh, continue on with sprinkles. So I'm gonna step out myself for four minutes and we'll be back and do our get set up for sprinkle. So I just let it run. All right, we should be getting back from our break here uh, pretty soon. So um, if you have a, a free second, I'd love to hear from you. Like, how are you doing? Um, are, you, are you keeping up? Are you, are you actually cooking along out there? I hope, uh, hope you're not just watching because this has got to be deadly boring if you are. Uh, hopefully you're cooking and mostly engaged in that and just uh, hearing me as coaching. But I'd like to hear how you're doing out there. Um, I am just talking at a uh, at a camera over here. So uh, we'll be back in in uh, four, three, two, one. Okay, so um, we're gonna get set up for sprinkle. So I'm gonna give us five minutes to do that. And so what that means is, like I said, you want to make sure that you get your your cutting board and your, your knife washed up and put away. ABC. The ABCs. You want to be practicing the ABC of cooking. Always be cleaning. So you want to finish 
up one move entirely before you move on to the next move. Um, the reason you don't want like stuff around all the time, so put away all your bowls and stuff. You don't want things taking up your counter space because then you're fighting for counter space the whole time, right? So uh, I'm gonna put my uh, my refuse away. You're, every time you have to pick up something because you didn't clean it up, that's that's burning your time. So you wanna clear the decks each time, right? Get to a nice clear place again here. Just wipe it down, take the second to wipe it down. Nice clean surface. And if you can, uh, hopefully you're using the uh, chop station area for your sprinkle station now. So um, we should have out the starting five, your olive oil, your pepper, your salt. Um, you should probably have out some onion and garlic and lemon and lime. So you've, you've got this uh, stationed around here. You're using up, you know, the stuff that's closer to the splash, uh, backsplash. That's your whole um, place that you're setting that up. And then get out all of your uh, seasonings that you want to use. Um, everything that's in addition to the starting five. Get those out now. Take them all the way out of the pantry, out of the refrigerator door, and set them up around here. So you want to leave a little space like this um, that's available. And everything else wants to be seasonings. This is your mise en place. You want to have everything at hand's reach as we get into the sprinkle move so that you can just plant your feet and bang through stuff, right? So, um, of course, I've got my uh, my spice racks that I use. This makes the transition to sprinkle super fast. One. And two. But, um, chances are you don't have this, but uh, you probably do have a, uh, a, a spice rack that you can put up. Um, but also grab all the other little doodads and stuff and have them handy or if you have them in a drawer, have the drawer open and nearby. Um, you have the uh, seasoning guide that I, I sent you and you've uh, printed that out. That's the, the guide to world cuisine domination, which you can use. Or you can just do the starting five plus whatever's clever or the starting five plus the, the S's, right? Which we're going to, I'll keep reviewing as we go through our our seasoning, wave after wave of seasonings. We're gonna do five waves of seasonings um, when we get into it. But right now, you've got another two minutes to get out all of your seasonings. So we have um, a couple of comments on the garlic. Yeah. Somebody said, we didn't have our garlic ready. Definitely should have thought about that in advance. Ah, yeah. Yeah, having, uh, having, getting some garlic uh, shopped for and make sure that you've got some, you know, having a standing bag like this is, is a great practice just to have. Uh, but it's something you want to write down every time you go, like your components plus your seasonings. You know, what, what do you have to get for? Right, because you do have seasonings. five minutes to cut up your seasonings. Yeah, you got the five minutes. You're going to do that and you're going to get your, your lemons and limes, any fresh herbs. Um, you know, as you get better at this, um, you can you can incorporate those fresh herbs. You know, if not, um, once if if your knife skills are a little slow, you might use all of that time for chopping up your produce. Um, but the idea is just to have little uh, uh, timed intervals and make sure that you have everything you need in the door before you start to move. Because once it's happening, you can't run to the store again to get stuff. Um, you're just gonna have to uh, live with what you got and do the best you can. It's no biggie to not be cooking with garlic this week. Um, maybe you've got onions, uh, or you're not gonna have onions or garlic in your in your meals this week. It's no big deal. You've got hopefully a lot of other seasonings to choose from: salt, pepper, and your oils are gonna be still a very strong uh, base of operation. And someone else is asking: Do you ever use pre-minced garlic from a jar, or is that a cooking <coughs> sin? <laughs> Is that a cooking sin, the uh, pre mince in a jar? It is a bit. I, I would say that most most um, serious cooks would not use the uh, pre mince. It doesn't taste very good um, compared to freshly minced garlic. That is one of those, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of getting everything pre minced, pre chopped, you know, go as fast as possible. But something like that, um, the taste of it, hurts it so much that it's worth actually taking the time to mince up your garlic. So next week, 
go with um, fresh minced garlic. Um, all right, so that's the end of uh, your seasoning. So hopefully you've got your sprinkle station set. You're ready for action. And we are going to do our first five minute interval. Uh, and so what does that mean? That means you're gonna get, um, uh, let's say you've got a whole um, arrangement of individual ingredients over in your staging area. We're gonna do five five minute rounds of seasoning. So kind of just visually, you know, break that up into five, um, you know, easy chunks and bring the containers over to your sprinkle station. You know, the other way to do it is like, well, how much, how much space do I actually have in my sprinkle station? And let that be defining how many things you can season all at once. If you have some things that are um, already grouped together as meals, then kind of keep them in a row here so you know that they go together. You can separate them out a little bit. Or they could be all just a hodgepodge a la carte like this and get them in front of you. And then you've got, uh, right now, we've got four minutes to, to, to go. So you want to take your salt, pick up your salt, pick it up once, and hit everything that's going to get salt. Salt, 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 salt. You're going to salt, 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 however much you want to use. So what's good about um, salting all of your ingredients all for the week at once is you can really keep a good um, eye on how much your salt you're using in the week. So you could actually even before the event even begins, portion out how much salt you're gonna allow yourself for the number of meals that you're gonna make. And that's gonna keep your you know salt intake at a um, measured amount. So if that's important to you, um, you know, to keep it down, you'd wanna measure it out and say, okay, well, I've only got this much to use, so I'm gonna pick my, my battles, you know, who's, who needs it the most. But, um, you know, I would just get a good sprinkle on, on everything. Um, you know, do enough that you can get a, a good taste of it. Um, you know, where, where people get too much sodium in their lives is from processed foods, a lot more than fresh cooked, home cooked foods. But the amount of salt we usually put in our own food is, is nowhere near the amount that they do in processed foods. So, um, be, uh, be generous with it. Um, the other thing I'll say, if you are trying to limit your salt, but you like salt, um, then go under seasoned here and then uh, season at the table. When you put salt on the outside of the ingredient, you need le you only need less salt to get uh, a good salty taste. So that's a way to cut down your salt. After you're done with your salt, pepper, pepper, pepper. Hit everything with pepper, right? Go all the, the ones that you have. And then use your oils. Everything that's getting oil, um, oil it all up. And that's what you want to do. Want to pick it up once. So don't pick it up and finish seasoning one component, right, before you move on to the next one. Because then you've picked up salt five different times. Pick it up one time, go across all five. Pick up salt one time, go across all five. That's the power of the assembly line that you've established for yourself here in Sprinkle Room. All your oils. Now what's getting onions and garlic, right? Finish your starting five on all of the ingredients that are in front of you, okay? Get that to a place where you say, okay, I've got my starting five on all of these ingredients. And then at that point, now take them individually and here's where you do your, your something special, the little zing. So you can just add a, a whatever's clever to each of these things. Like the starting five should be saying to you, okay, yeah, that's, it's already looking like I've got something that's well seasoned here. Now, what am I going to add to it, right? So, are you going to add uh, some dried herbs to yours? Are you going to add a, a sauce or something that you pulled from the refrigerator? Is it soy sauce? Is it a hot sauce? Um, you know, is it a, something sweet? Is it a mustard? Uh, just grab anything that looks good to you. Like I said, you, you're starting from a base of of, of strength with your starting five. So, um, you know, just get something that's whatever's clever on that. If you're going a little more advanced, you might do the S's where you say, you know, I'm gonna grab something sweet, something spicy and something sour. You know, something sour might be your lemon or your lime, uh, might be a vinegar. Uh, your something sweet might be a honey or a maple syrup. Um, and you put those in and they're, that balance of taste is gonna make it really pleasing. It's kind of frames what you're doing 
even more than just saying, I like soy sauce or I like hot sauce, right? Um, so think about that. Uh, or what you can be doing is looking at that at sheet and saying, I'm going to take you to Mexico. You're going to China. You're going to France. You know, and, then, and, that, and just grab the seasonings that you have that can take you to that place. So another five minutes to do the next wave. So hopefully whatever you put in front of you is done and you move them out back over to your staging area, right? You put them back in the staging area. You don't need to delineate it or anything because they're going to be very clearly seasoned, right? So then once you put those over there, then bring in the fresh, the new victims. So Blair is writing, now I'm confused. Okay. Am I putting the meats in with the veggies? I thought I would be cooking the meat all by itself and cook the veggies in a different way. Yes. So, um, no, you don't put them together. You don't combine them. Um, if what you meant by that was I said you could put the meats on top in its container, so a separate container. That's why you want to have it in a bowl or in tinfoil or something that keeps it separated from the uh, vegetables. So. Yes, you want to season everything um, individually, and we're going to cook everything individually so that it's all very a la carte. Everything can be mixed and mashed and put together, um, back together when you do the, the meal prep puzzle game um, and put meals together from their components at the end. If you're advanced, if you know, you know cooking and, and all of this is making obvious sense to you, then you might go the extra step of combining some things combine them two vegetables because you know you want to season them together um, or have them in a row next to each other and the meat right there as well. Um, but if you're not at that level, don't worry about combining anything. Just take each one at, its, at, its, at, a, at a time. One at a time. You got, you got meats, just focus on that meat, right? So um, hopefully you're, you're off and away. You're doing your second round. You start doing your starting five first, salt, salt, salt. Pepper, 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 onion, 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 garlic, 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 oils, 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 and then take them individually. Where are you going? So if this is the meat, where are you going to go? Maybe I'm going to go to, to Italy with you. So what am I going to add if I go to Italy? Maybe some basil, maybe some oregano in addition to the starting five. So you got the um, olive oil, you've got the salt, pepper, onion, garlic, oregano, and basil. Very Italian already, right? So just keep um, working each of these containers uh, to get them to a place. Now, I know a lot of people um, uh, wonder about like, well, I'm doing this is Italian and this is uh, Mexican and this is French. Um, how do I keep track of that? How do I uh, you know, um, make sure that it, it all goes together? Well, one thing is um, you don't really need to. I mean, you know, you're putting together uh, components and you know, if one component's a little Mexican and one's Italian and stuff. It's kind of fun. It's kind of neat. So, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, the important thing is that you have um, well well balanced meals that are well seasoned and they're at the ready. That's job number one. Food as fuel. Food as fuel. Your everyday meal. So just get that done first. Like make sure that you have a system in place to do that, and then. You can start fine tuning that and saying, all right, well, I'm going to make this a unified Chinese you know, dish. Each component is going to be Chinese. And you can do that by organizing it through the cooking process saying, OK, you guys are all going to be Chinese. Now, if you want to um, identify something, just take a, uh, a piece of seasoning or um, some some uh, so like a, a, a rind of a, of a lemon or a lime or something and, and cut off a little piece and put it in there with it. And that would be your cue to say, that is my Chinese dish, right? You only need to do that on a few things that you feel like you're going to forget what happened with it, right? Uh, when it all comes out. But chances are you're going to basically remember when it comes out, you're going to be able to smell things. You're going to be able to look at the seasonings and say, oh, that had my, you know, my soy sauce in it or whatever. Um, but if it's looking like it's going to be unclear, Put some kind of visual uh, marker in it. Maybe take uh, a piece of um, 
vegetable from one of the other containers, just one piece, put it in there, and that's your cue that like, oh, that's the one that I've designated as Chinese. It's a, it's a little complicated to have to do all of that. I would encourage you to just make your ingredients and serve them up a la carte and let it be a, a world tour on, on each plate until you can do the thing where you can, you know, organize them as meals, organize them on a meal planner, which will help you put them back together. But that's a little more advanced than we're covering right here. Okay, wave two is done. Let's go on to wave three. So you take these away, right? Put those back here. Now you've got two waves of cooked and you've got three waves of uncooked. I mean, unseasoned, I'm sorry. And now you're gonna bring back over wave three. And we're blazing through this. So this is a, just, this is all your meal prep for the week. You've already got everything chopped and half seasoned. So you're halfway uh, there. So again, same game. Salt, 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 salt. Pick it up once, hit everything that you're gonna salt, and then pick up the pepper and hit everything that you're gonna pepper. And then pick up your oils and do everything that you're gonna um, use your oils on. And like I said, mix up the oils as you see fit. You can uh, grab butter if you want for some of them. You can grab your sesame oil for others, coconut oil, you know, play around with it. Try different ones if you want. So um, since you're mentioning the oil, someone is asking, would you season everything? For example, we have mushrooms and baby spinach. Would you put the starting five in with those two? If so, would you use the oil first to help the other stuff stick? Yes, I would, uh, I would season everything. Yeah, would definitely season everything. Um, you know, in addition to it making it taste better, um, you just want to get the experience, you know, with, with seasonings, with seeing how it comes out. How does it play out throughout the week? Um, you know, it's a, it's a process that's going to be ongoing, um, you know, for as long as you, you eat and you meal prep, you're going to want to be very interested in seasonings and how the seasonings play out. So this is your opportunity. Definitely season everything, you know, everything that you can season, do season. Um, one thing you don't need to season is other seasonings. Uh, I've had people in the class, they'll season basil. You don't need to season basil. Basil, you use to season other things, you know, for instance. Um, but yes, absolutely season it. The order of how you put on the starting five doesn't matter at all. Just willy nilly, just put them on. The only thing I would say to you is put the start, all the starting five on everything first before you start doing your precision work on each individual dish, right? They all get the starting five. It doesn't have to be everything in the starting five. You can say, you get salt, you get salt, you don't get salt. You get salt, you don't get salt. You get pepper, you get pepper. Now you guys get oil, you know, so you can decide that not everything has to get all of the starting five, right? Um, but while you're doing the starting five, the important thing is pick up your salt once, right? That's, that's an efficiency thing. And then, and it also helps you decide how much salt you're getting in throughout the week. Same with all the other oils, but the oil is going to help it um, get mixed up, whether you put it on in the beginning or the end. And if we're doing a stir fry method, do we still season now, then mix while cooking, as opposed to seasoning while cooking? Absolutely. Um, that's a great question. Season now or while cooking. Season everything now. Everything gets seasoned now. You don't need to um, season things while you're cooking. Those, that's a very nuanced thing. So um, that's when you're doing your special meals, your dinner parties, like to, for instance, um, cook down your onions and your garlic and, and oil first and then add the ingredients and all that stuff. You don't need to do all that sort of thing. Just throw it all in, stir fry it up all at once. It's gonna come out roughly awesome. So. You don't need to worry about that. Put all the seasonings in and the oils in here. Again, we don't, we don't we're not going to oil the pans when we when we get to the poke move. You just heat the pans up, dump it on because it's already got oil in the seasoning container, right? So, yeah, definitely, and especially with stir fry, have all the seasonings in ahead of time. All right, you've got uh, 45 seconds more to get this seasoned up. And, and you know, we're on a clock. 
Um, that means just do the best you can in the time that you have. Like I said, this is um, it's an ongoing process. The sprinkle move is particularly. Um, you're going to learn stuff. Every time you try something new, it's a chance to learn something. And treat your meal preps, especially in the, the early goings, as chances to experiment. You know, that's more what you're interested in is expanding your palate, trying new things, seeing how stuff plays out. It's going to be uh, a, a greater value to you than just nailing any one particular thing. So definitely um, do the best you can in the time you have, uh, but move on and just treat it as a learning experience. All right. Wave four. Wave four. Well, not everybody's cooking 15 meals, right? Right. Yeah. However you divided it up, so it doesn't need to be that you're doing, you know, that many containers um, at each wave, but you know, what I'm trying to get you to do is just to take them in waves as opposed to have, you know, all of these seasonings and you're going around and salting everything, right? And peppering everything. They, the difficulty with that is you really lose track of what you're doing when you try to take on season, you know, salt to everything and then pepper everything. It's better to just have your sprinkle station, uh, your staging areas there, your sprinkle stations here. You put your stuff down and you focus on what you're doing. So, now yeah, someone wrote, I'm so glad you recommended we do not try and do all the 15 meals the first time. Exclamation. <laughs> Good. <laughs> it's, a, it's a beast, you know. Um, I, this, the chop move in particular is uh, what will slow you down. Anything that you've been able to chop up and get to this point, you should be able to season up and be able to cook up um, in the remainder of the two hours. Uh, so let the chop move be sort of the, the, the cutting edge for you. You know, the faster you get at, at chop, the rest of the stuff is going to fall into place. The poke move, you'll see, it can also take a long time if the, the volume's really high. Um, but the sprinkle move, that's where you can usually make up time um, by just get that starting five on everything very quick. And don't spend a lot of time thinking about it. Just get some seasonings on there. Make sure it's, you've seasoned it well, season with a strong hand, be bold, and um, and make sure that like when you look at it, you're like, yeah, that's really well seasoned. And that's all you need to get to in this, you know, in these early days of learning how to, you know, meal prep and season up a bunch of stuff at once. You don't need to have it really fine tuned. You don't need unified meals yet. Um, and uh, And you don't need it to be, you know, playing with things like we play with later in later belts where you are going to, you know, have uh, flavor notes and taste balancing and get a much deeper understanding of the flavor profiles and where you do pan sauces and, um, uh, you know, pureeing things that those are all like um, things that are going to come into focus once you get this process down and you start feeling really comfortable with meal prep as a routine in general, you know? So like I was saying in the lessons, job number one, make sure that they're knocking out the problems in your life. Number two, they have the, the components that are right for a well-balanced meal. Then how well, you know, seasoned are they? That's, that becomes the whole game after you've knocked out those first two things. Process first and then perfect it later, you know? So here again, just, have fun with the seasonings. Try stuff. If you haven't, you know, um, tasted one of your seasonings, actually just go ahead and taste it, smell it, you know, make sure you understand what it is so you, you recognize it later in the week when you are trying the thing. All right, you're in wave four. You've got a minute and a half left. Keep going at it. Boom, boom, boom. Salt, 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 pepper, pepper, pepper. Get into your um, cuisines. Uh, hopefully you have, um, have printed out the, um, the guide, but you can always fall back to whatever's clever. Um, just get that starting five on and try stuff. The, the S's again is something spicy, something sweet, something sour, and something savory. So you don't need to put all four on, but the point there is to not necessarily like in any one dish, like say you got those mushrooms, you don't need to put 
two sour things. You don't need lemon and vinegar. It's lemon or vinegar. And then you don't need two sweet things. You don't need two spicy things, just one, you know, so that might be your, your, your Chinese chili sauce that you're putting on there. You don't need that and jalapenos or chipotle or something like that. Just one. Um, and try to get, you know, a couple of the S's because the more um, taste that you put into the same dish, the more pleasing it's going to be, the more balanced it's going to be as a taste. So um, that's the power of those, those S's and the, and the flavor profiles, you know, um, are going to make it feel like you've, you've gone on a trip, which is makes it pretty awesome. So another uh, 10 seconds, get this wave four, and we've got one wave left after that, and then we'll be able to take another um, quick break, let you catch your breath, get caught up. Put our oven on. And, uh, and put our oven on. We are going to put our oven on right at the end of this last five-minute wave, but um, since uh, Sarah mentioned it, let's, let's go ahead and do it now, and I'll remind you again after this in case you didn't. But you want to put your oven on to 400 degrees, 400 degrees. Um, and that's going to be good enough to cook everything that's going in the oven. I'll explain that a little bit more in poke, but get it preheated right now. Um, but more importantly, stay on point with your, with your seasonings. Go put those down, put them where they need to go back in the ingredient staging area. Get your last wave. These are whatever else you have to season up. Um, you're going to do this here now. Um, you know, let's talk about eggs a little bit. Uh, if you're seasoning eggs, um, the cracked eggs that you uh, might do as a scramble or um, baked eggs, um, there you're going to hit it with uh, um, your starting five. Um, you can put the onion and garlic in it if you want to. Um, you might just, you know, just do the, the salt and pepper uh, on those. You can do a little oil if you want to. The uncooked ones you don't need to season, the ones that you're gonna hard boil or poach. Um, those you just leave in their containers. Um, I find that scrambled eggs, you know, the ones um, that you use in the wraps, the breakfast burritos and stuff like that, those are good if, um, if you were actually going to like wrap them up or mix them with something else. Um, if you're just eating scrambled eggs on their own, um, then you know reheated scrambled eggs are not quite as good as baked eggs um, for for reheated. So scrambled eggs and baked eggs, there's not there's no difference except for how you cook them. The scrambled egg is going to go on the stove top. You scramble them up. The baked egg is going to go in the oven and uh, and get baked. And those to me, um, if they're eat, eaten on their own, they 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 bake up a little bit better. Uh, but you want to get some uh, seasonings in your eggs as well. And you can, you can take your eggs, you know, you put your salt, your pepper, your oil, you can take your eggs to any of these um, uh, cuisines. So you got Moroccan eggs, you got French eggs, you got Italian seasoned eggs, put the seasonings in there that are going to, you know, bring it to life beyond it being just um, scrambled eggs. So just because it's eggs doesn't mean it needs to be bland. Uh, you can do something uh, special with that as well but um uh you got another couple of minutes here to get everything seasoned up so this should be ideally the whole shebang um, of things that you're trying to get seasoned so uh, i'd love to hear from you if you if you've been able to get everything seasoned have you are you caught up with us or are you um are you you're struggling are you behind right now Ooh, i have a question yeah where did you get those beautiful spice racks <laughs> the spice racks yeah um so you saw hopefully in the in the lesson that uh we made these spice racks ourselves uh, these are custom kitchen karate spice racks and we um sell a sticker set that allows you to make them yourself and you can go to um the uh day four lesson where we cover sprinkle and there'll be a, a link to be able to get the stickers and also it'll show you uh, on the amazon store where to buy the actual acrylic things if you want to uh, make these yourself um, it's the same information that you have in the the guide mm -hmm. it's just built into a spice rack so they make meal prepping without recipes super easy and that's why we we uh, design them is so that we could go recipe free and concentrate on this speed and efficiency and it's also really great as you saw to be able to just pull them all out plop them down 
and have your spices like your, your, your sprinkle station is all built and ready to roll super fast. So um, you got a, about a minute left. Season away. Go, 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 go. Get those, get those uh, sauces and spices flying. Um, make sure they're in there. Um, if you want to, you know, test any of your things, make sure that they're well seasoned enough. You can take a fork and just go around to, you know, keep, keep one fork for your vegetables and a different one for your meats, but um, just stir them up and make sure that they're actually all well coated, well oiled, you know, that the seasonings are all around. You want to give a last look at, at any of this, this, the pieces over there after you've finished seasoning everything up. You know, just give a last look, make sure, boy, do I have everything uh, seasoned up enough um, to my liking. And as I said, go, go, go bigger than smaller. Be bold, not timid with uh, your seasonings. Okay, so that is the end of wave five. We're going to take another five-minute break to um, regroup. At this point, make sure you have your oven set to 400 degrees. So turn your oven on. 400 degrees so that by the time we we actually start the cooking process which will be the last 40 minutes um you have an oven that is up to 400 degrees because we want to be able to get things cooked quickly so 400 degrees make it so and i will meet you back here um, about four and a half minutes set that timer Step off.
Okay, we are back. Uh, we've got the last 40 minutes to go. So this first five minutes of the, of the last 40 minutes is how we're gonna set up for poke. So hopefully you're all caught up. Um, I didn't see any questions come through on the break. Um, maybe you're behind on a, on a delay, I'm not sure. But um, we're gonna move into poke. And uh, the first thing we wanna do is what I call poke prep. And that is where we separate the oven items from the stovetop items, right? So here now we're gonna be getting into like, we need four areas. So um, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is, is use an area uh, that's gonna be designated for your um, things that are gonna go in the oven. Now, if you have uh, roasting trays, um, I would put those down. Um, otherwise, just kind of put all the, the items over, over here that are going to go in. They're either going to get cooked in tin foil, or they're going to get cooked in your, your, your Pyrex, or your corning ware. Um, however, you're going to get them in the oven. Make sure you've got containers for that. Um, and as I said, tin foil is your, your backup, your fail safe. And so you've got all these ingredients here. And what you want to do is look through them all and say, which one of you clowns is going to get cooked in the oven, right? And so what are good oven candidates? Um, root vegetables. You want to take any root vegetables you've got and put them over into the oven area, right? Um, they're going to be out of your way when they're, they're in the oven rather than taking up time on your stove top. Um, a lot of uncut pieces of meat are good to put into the oven area. So that's, you're going to roast your, your oven, uh, roast your meats in there. That's the ones that are not sliced up for your stir fry. Um, and then the soft vegetables, that's sort of dealer's choice. Um, my preference is usually to try to put as much stuff in the oven area as I can and leave as little that I have to do on the stove top um, as possible. That's because once you stuff it in the oven, it's out of your face. You don't have to deal with it until... You have to check it, you know, when the uh, timer goes off. The stuff that's on the stovetop, that's where you're actively working, cooking things on the stovetop, right? So try to get as much stuff that you can fit in the oven. I can fit um, two roasting trays side by side on each of my two shelves, so I can pack that sucker to the gills and get a lot um, cooked. So the things that would stay in the stove on the stovetop area for sure leafy greens so anything that you're going to be like wilting down don't put that in the oven um, <coughs> and uh, um, the cut up pieces of meat um, are going to be uh, really good candidates for the the stovetop so you can really kind of wash them and see how they get cooked down and then any of the um, soft vegetables your, your tomatoes your mushrooms you know your squash those kinds of things those are pretty good candidates for um, the stovetop as well. Either or, that's your that's your that's your swing. Um, uh, like I said, you want to maybe have a few waves of things that you have to do on the stovetop. I'm going to encourage you to cook with all four burners at the same time. So get your pots and your pans out um, here as well, and get everything separated. Oven stuff over here. Stovetop stuff over here. Your oven should be almost up to 400 degrees. Now focus here on your on your on the things that are going in the oven. Focus on getting them into position where you can put them in and out of the oven uh, quickly. So hopefully you can put them on a roasting tray. I'll show you what I mean by a roasting tray if you don't know. So yeah, this is uh, this is called a half size bun sheet. This is what I use, but you know, a cookie sheet can work. I like this, the the ones with this high side like this, so that you know when you put your your ingredients on it, especially like uh, you know Pyrex, it's not gonna slide off. You can really move it around without it flying off like you would with a, a cookie sheet. But you can put um, your your tin foil boats there as well. Um, you know, they can all go in here. You can have a whole arrangement of tinfoil bowls. You can fit a bunch of tinfoils on one of these trays or your cookie sheet. But get everything into roasting position, right? 
that's uh, the, the name of the game during this poke prep. It's good to take the time to separate the wheat from the chaff, right? So um, that's the end of our, our poke prep. Now it's time to actually get our ingredients in the oven. So there, you've got this all staged. I'm gonna give us, uh, um, actually, let's, let's put it in. Put everything in that's gonna go in the oven. Go ahead and put them in the oven. Just keep packing all the stuff in that you can. Maybe you're doing it individually. Put them all in, try to get as many in as possible. So if you've got more to do than you can actually fit, just put as much in as you possibly can on this first wave, right? Then you're gonna set your kitchen timer. And I, I recommend you actually do this in your own kitchen if you can. Um, I'm gonna set it here and I'll, I'll alert you, but set it to 15 minutes. Set, set this to 15 minutes. That's what how long the stuff is gonna be in the oven for. And that's going. So 15 minutes in the oven, 400 degrees. So what I'm saying to you is pretty much everything cooks in about 15 minutes at 400 degrees. So not everything will be cooked all the way through your root vegetables, thick cuts of meat, they won't be finished cooking. But your soft vegetables, your squash, your eggplant, your tomatoes and stuff, they're gonna cook up really well in 15 minutes at 400 degrees. 400 degrees is a really good forgiving temperature. Um, and so you'll see how it, it comes out, but the whole idea of 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 20 minutes is up. We're gonna do 15 minutes, it's a good, good number. I've done this a million times. Um, you're not going to burn anything um, by doing that. And then when you cut, when we get to the end of it, we're going to do our poke test. So um, that's going. Now it's time to uh, get things happening on the stovetop. So put all your pans down on the stovetop, whatever pans you have. I have uniform pans because I don't like, um, I don't like, uh, the pans to be fighting for space with each other. So you got this big one and the small one. I like everything to be, I know exactly how they're all gonna perform. They all perform uniformly. They all fit on the burners very nicely. But right now you're gonna use whatever you've got. You can even cook in pots. The bottom of a pot is just as good as the bottom of a pan for cooking things. You know, it's just the shape of a thing. What size Don't pans are those? These are, uh, these are nine inch pans. So the 9-inch, 4-9-inch fit on the... 4-9-inch uh, fit on most things. Now turn everything up to high. So get all all the, the, the burners going to high. Um, you're going to want to keep your oven mitts near you this whole time. You're going to want your utensils near you, right? Um, you just need a couple of spoons, spatulas for the meats. Often I will cook through the, um, the plant matter first. So as these pans are heating up, Put away all of your seasonings, you're done. You're breaking down the spices. So put those all back as your pans are heating up. This is clearing the decks. You, you need this area again for your poke test. So as things start coming out, you need a place to check and see if they're done. So clear up all of your seasonings, put everything back before we put anything into the pans, right? So the pans are getting hot. Things are already cooking in the oven, and you are clearing the decks. Let's get this whole place cleared up. Vin posted a picture. Oh yeah. Of this meal prep. Vin and he wrote first time meal prep success. Courtesy of Casey and Company. <laughs> you see how we can hear in the back? Yeah. You guys rock. Thanks for everything. Wow. There, he's already done? Well, I don't know. It looks <laughs> like it. <laughs> Good man. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for playing. So now um, you've got these these ones that are on your, uh, that you're going to cook on your stove top, right? And you just want to bring them over four at a time. I like to do the vegetables first. If you arrange them in a way where you can actually visually see, then you can just dump it in and dump it in, you know, and dump that in there and dump it in and do that. 
and you've got all four and they're matched up, this is something you can go back into. Now, um, some people with a, a concern about heating up plastic and stuff, uh, maybe you want to swap it out and put tin foil down for um, landing in. I actually do just go straight back in this right from the, the heat onto it. Um, the seasonings are all there. These are just vegetables. There's no worry about any kind of contamination or disease or anything like that, right? They come from being cooked right back into where they were seasoned, the oils, the seasonings and stuff. That is all safe. That's no problem. You haven't mixed it with any meat. If you did mix the vegetables with meats, this is no longer safe to put the cooked ingredients back in. So they need to go in the dishwasher uh, to, to, into the sink to get washed, okay? So that's your choice. You can go right back in, or you can break off some tin foil or, or a different bowl or different storage container. But it's great to go right back into your storage container because you're that much closer to being packed up and done. Over here, things should be starting to happen, right? And you just need one little wooden spoon and go between them. The good thing about... Um, having everything going all at once, all the seasonings behind you, all the cooking, choppings behind you. Now you're just posted up watching these things cook down, right? And here the whole game is when something's done, it's done, let's get it out of there, get it into a thing, and then you gotta quickly rinse and repeat. So you wanna wash it up and... So you put a hot pan under water? Get it in there. So yes, I treat my pans very roughly. I, I will take them right from the high heat, put it under water, rinse it off. Things get rinsed off very quickly when they're hot, you know? So um, that's a great thing for you. You can put it in, you can use a, a sponge and, a, and your spoon, put your spoon right on the sponge and wash it out so that you don't have to worry about getting close to that hot pan with your hands while you're cleaning, but you're not, washing the pans between you're just rinsing and repeating you're just getting the seasonings off there's nothing this is a these are very hot they're killing anything with it there's nothing unsafe about it um but you just kind of want to get the seasonings off right and so the whole game is you're just cooking things down dumping them off and when something's done put it back over into your staging area bring a new guy in boom Right, and you just want to keep going as quickly as you can. Get them, get them off of there. If you feel like it's getting too out of control, just turn the heat off. Cut the flames on the ones that you're worried about, while you deal with the ones that you aren't. And then, then turn it back up. Okay, so don't uh, don't get too intimidated. It gets a little, it gets a little crazy in there cooking with four. If you're really nervous about it, just take it down to two. Just cycle it through or two. Um, but the idea is to use all of your surface area, as much as you can on your stove top as possible. Cycle through as many things as you can cook on your stove top um, in this 15 minutes that we've got that's going on in the oven. So I know it's probably getting really loud in your kitchen. There's a lot of activity. You're probably not uh, even hearing what I'm saying anymore, but if you are, uh, my, my, my thing is stay calm. Stay collected, be safe, use your oven mitts when you're reaching over here. Hopefully you've got each time that you can wear, right? And you can reach in um, with your oven mitts and to keep it safe. And just be, you know, precise, be slow. This is flames, things are hot. Um, and you wanna just make sure that whatever you're doing, you're being safe first and then you're getting things cooked correctly on top of that, right? I'm surprised you're not wearing your um, kitchen karate apron. Me too. <laughs> but I'm not cooking, so I didn't think to wear my uh, my kitchen karate apron. When you take the, the full course, you'll get to see me in the full regalia, ah. which is a beautiful thing. Um, so yeah, so you're you're continuing on the stove top here and getting things out, rinsing and repeating. And that's what, another good thing for your dish rag is just wipe it out, boom, back in the game. So it just keeps cycling through your stuff. Now, your vegetables are gonna cook down maybe a, a little 
faster than uh, your meats. Um, if you want to cook things all together, be my guest. Throw them all in. If you know a meal goes together, just like a stir fry. Like a stir fry. Put the the meats and the vegetables all in. Like I said, just don't uh, put those back in the container that you seasoned them in. Put them into their storage container or into tin foil um, as you go. I'll show you one other trick, um, which is that you know with your utensil tray, um, if you have one, you can you can put the utensils aside that you're not using except for like a spoon or two and uh, some tongs for the meats if you like or your, your spatula. But you fill this up with water and that is going to allow you to sort of dip your spoon into it and get the seasonings off between the, the pans. So it's like you've got some water in there and then you can just go like that and get the seasonings off your, your thing as you go between the pans. It's uh, not not necessary at all, but if you really don't like mixing up the seasonings, um, that's a, it's a good little trick to do to get those seasonings out of your way. So right now um, you should be uh, cooking things down. Um, we went through, uh, in the lesson about the poke test, um, which we're going to get into a little more in more detail when we do the do our stop to check what's in the oven. But as things are going on the stovetop, you just want to be putting a fork in things and deciding for yourself how um, cooked you want it to be. Um, you know from eating how cooked you like things to be with a fork. So when you put a fork in it, you should have a pretty good sense of, is that how you like it to be? Um, generally, you don't like things to be super mushy and you don't like things to be super firm. So if it's fighting back against your fork, it needs a little more where that came from. Um, if it's not fighting back at all, get it off of there because it's about to turn into mush on you. It's about to get liquefied. So if it's a leafy green, as soon as it's wilted down, it's done. Um, doesn't need to cook any longer than that. So get it, get that off quickly um, and just stir, you know, you're, you're trying to get the seasonings all mixed up with everything. That's a, a big part of the stirring um, that you're doing. The other reason is so that no one side kind of burns before it gets cooked through. So, uh, you know, it's just, this is all part of the process, learning to be able to identify by eye um, and by a poke test when things are done cooking mm -hmm. and you want to get adept at that. And vegetables are good raw also, or al dente. Yeah. Yeah. The, the point is, you know, with vegetables in particular, meats you have to cook through. But with vegetables, you could have eaten them raw. So you cook them down. You really are just trying to get them to the, to, to the firmness or the softness that you like. And you can tell that with just a quick poke of the fork. So there's no mystery about it. Um, you know, there's no exact timing that you need to do something. You just want to get it to a place that you like. Yeah, we have um, someone cooking up zucchini, sweet potatoes, rice, and chicken. Great. I hope those sweet potatoes are in the oven because they will take a long time on the stovetop. Mm. Uh, Sweet potatoes are a great candidate to put in the oven. Those root vegetables, they'll probably go through both waves of this um, time in the, in, the, in the oven, which we've got uh, two minutes left to try to get our stovetop ingredients as far as they can. Go, keep going, even if, if you feel like your timer's about to go off and you don't want to put something on, do it. Get it all filled up. What we're going to do when the timer goes off is turn all the heat off on the stovetop stop down so we can really focus on what's been going on in our oven and do our poke test there really check stuff out and put it back in so push it as hard as you can on the stovetop crank through as many things as you can hopefully this is where it's getting really kind of fun uh, in your kitchen you're really smelling things you're hearing the sound of cooking somebody's poking their head in and saying that smells good what's going on in here this is when all the the work that you've been doing is starting to come to life for you, right? So um, here's our timer. We are done with our 15 minutes. So as I said, 
turn everything off on your stovetop. Off, off, off. No flames, no heat. If you're electric, just turn it down to zero. Just let it stop cooking, right? If there's any last little bits that you can, something's done, go ahead and get it into a container, right? And put it aside. But now what we want to do is get our, our ingredients out. So you've got either this space where you had the, the roasting, um, the, the oven on deck uh, components. This should be clear and free. Or this space here if you don't have the containers. But you're going to need a space to look at what you pull out of your oven. So let's do that. Um, and uh, that doesn't clear that oh. um, and and if you have um, counters that you need to protect then you want to put something down they like these trivets um, this will help you be able to put like the roasting trays down so you can just put them down wherever you're gonna throw stuff and as you pull things out of the oven you're gonna you know obviously use your oven mitts our timer just went off. I'm going to give us five minutes to do this poke test. So hopefully your timer has gone off um, and you're, you've got everything shut off. You're about to pull the stuff out of the oven with your oven mitts and you want to get one out. Um, you want to get the second one out. All this stuff comes out and it goes on into a place where you can really get a good handle on it. If you've got uh, more. You got four trays in there. You're gonna maybe use this space over here as well, right? Wherever you've got free counter space, you put it out. Get that next one out of there. I'm just uh, miming along with you so that um, I'm doing it roughly at the same speed as you are. So you get everything out, and now. You're going to need a fork. And ideally, you have a uh, digital thermometer. If you're checking your meats by eye, then you're going to also need a knife to cut things um, through. But here, you're going to, uh, you're going to be checking the, the items. So um, that obviously showing you with any ingredients. But you're just going to put the fork in, just kind of you don't stab it in and force it in, but you just want to see how easy does the fork go into the, the to the vegetables. So your root vegetables are probably fighting back, and they're probably telling you, oh, they need some more where that came from. Just stir them up. This is a good time to stir all the, the, the juices and the oils and stuff. Get a good stir going there. And try to find some ingredients that are finished cooking. So anything that's done cooking, you want to... Get out of there, right? So that one's staying. This one's coming out. So pull it and put it on the side, right? And you just keep checking through stuff. And as you find things that can come out, you pull them out. And go through all the vegetables first with your, with your fork. Hit all the vegetables and then check out the meats because you don't want to put your fork into a, a piece of meat that's uncooked and then go and check more vegetables, right? Keep going to hit all your vegetables, wherever they may roam. You're gonna poke test all of them. And the idea is to try to consolidate down into your roasting trays or isolate the ones that need to go back in the oven from the ones that are done. So that's your first step. Just if you're done, pull them out. And you can maybe even put them over there with these other finished items. You know, if you've got that, that space over there, put the finished pieces over there. The other ones get consolidated down, um, all your vegetables first. And then with your meats, you want to use your thermometer if you've got one and put it right into the center of the cuts of meat, the thick cuts of meat. And um, you've got the, uh, hopefully you've got the, the meat temperature chart um, that I gave you, but the basics are chicken needs to come up to 165 and uh, pork needs to come up to 145. Some people would say 165 for pork as well. Um, but 145, I believe, is perfectly fine for that. And um, beef uh, can come up to uh, 135, right? And same with the, the fish. So it's really the chicken that's going to be the one that you've got to really make sure it gets up to 165. 
okay? Um, and hopefully you've got the, the meat temperature chart that you printed out. The other thing to do is to take a fork and a knife with your, with your meats and just cut them open right at the thickest part and so that you can see that it's cooked all the way through or not cooked all the way through. And uh, the juices should be running clear. If it's chicken, it should be white all the way through. Um, and there you, you'll need to wash your fork and knife if you cut through any meats that are uncooked, right? So get those out of the way and then you'll have to pull new ones to check the next piece. So um, that's five minutes of just checking out how far you are with this, just oven stuff. So at this point, you should be getting to a place where you've pulled all the things that are done. You've got all these other ones that are need to go back in, right, and, and finish up. If you can separate the, the vegetables from the meats, um, that's kind of a nice thing. So you can keep those all in a, in a place and the, the meats in another place. What you want to identify, though, is what needs to get cooked the least. So we're gonna, we got another 15 minutes of time to do all of our stovetop and oven work in this 40 minute block. But does everything need to get cooked for another 15 minutes or are some of them closer to like five minutes, 10 minutes? Whatever you identify as like the least, that's what you're gonna set your kitchen timer to. So that you get reminded, yeah, pull those items in five minutes and then you'll set your timer again. So our, our five minutes are up. We want to get our 15 minutes going again. So set your timer to 15 minutes and get everything that needs to go back in the oven, back in the oven, All right? Here you got your oven mitts, you're putting things in. So you got one tray of stuff or you're taking these all individually and you're putting that in. And by now we should be down to, you know, two trays. Maybe you've got two trays and, and one or two little stragglers that are going back in as well, right? So you put those in, just like that. You're cooking through. And, uh, and then once that's out of your way, you've got the timer on for 15 minutes or however long you set. Maybe, maybe you set yours for five minutes, you know, maybe it's eight minutes, 10, whatever it is you think it is for the thing that's going to be done the soonest. Um, leave that timer right there. I'll leave mine at five, at 10 minutes, just to remind myself that we're pulling a few items earlier. And then you're back in here. So now you're back on the stovetop. You can give this your full undivided attention. That's the important thing. So put, put everything back on high. You're getting the heat going again, right? And things are going to start to come back to life on your stovetop. That's the key is to really give the stuff that's on your stovetop your full attention because this is the stuff that's most likely to get burned, right? Or to go, go south on you. The stuff in the oven, nice safe, it's out of your way. This is the stuff that you need to mind and really be actively engaged in. And by being able to just stand here and watch them cook, that gives you the best opportunity to not overcook anything, right? It's very different than you got something going here and like, wait, well, now I'm supposed to add something else. So now you're you're over here in your recipes and you're trying to figure out what, what goes there and, oh, I need to get that other seasoning. And now you're over back in your pantry and where is that thing? And I got to find it. By the time you ever come back, it's burned. And so, now you're halfway through a recipe and the, the base of it's messed up. Totally different than what you're doing right now, which is you chopped everything, you seasoned everything. Now you're just standing here, minding the shop, making sure nothing burns. I'm watching you. I'm watching you. That's all you're doing. Nobody, nothing's distracting you away from it. And so just keep the game up. You can rinse, cook, stir, dip this, stir it. Right, steer it up, little darling, and just keep stirring, and you're gonna keep putting it into your, your containers, right? Wherever they may be, and you're gonna rinse, rinse it out. 
and bring it back into the game. Wait, any last stuff? Like I said, even if there's still some seasonings on it or there's a little black bits or whatever, don't worry about it. Just throw the next wave on there. It's, it's all going to be fine. You don't need to be precious with it. You know, like we were saying, we're pretty rough with our um, with our pots and pans. We don't buy expensive pots and pans. Um, these are these are, are great um, ceramic uh, based nonstick pans, so they're they're safer than, than Teflon. But um, you know, they last us uh, about a year of this really hardcore use um, before they're getting scratched up enough that we want to get a new one. But you know, we spend fourteen to 16 bucks a pan and we get way more than our money's worth out of it uh, to be able to use it roughly. Um, and uh, yeah, they'll, they'll last a lot longer than you think. They hold up really well. So most people are probably done um, unless somebody was doing 15 meals, right? Um, I'm not sure. Is anybody... Uh, has well, it, if they have chicken, it might still be in the oven. I think if I think the sweet potatoes, our sweet potato friend is still cooking. Um, any thick cuts of chicken. Um, if anybody has the the ability to give us an update on where they're at, uh, I'd love to hear it. But I'm sure you're up to your elbows in cooking and and negotiating your uh, your space. Um, the the idea is just to keep processing things through the oven and getting it into the staging area where things will be cooling down and getting ready for you to go to, you know, pack it up and clean up and things like that. So um, you've got your kitchen timer that's going to tell you when to check in on whatever's here and just stay posted up, cooking down the food and stuff. Uh, if anybody has any questions about how to know when things are done, um, certainly hit me up. I can uh, hopefully tell you without showing you. Um, but you know, in the, the actual cook along course, you will see all the ingredients that I'm cooking here, and, you know, throughout the, the, the 10 bell course, we try our hand at every single type of produce and protein that you could imagine. So you get to see how everything cooks down and how to specifically tell when things are done. Um, but the poke test is going to work for you. And, and the important thing is that you get a sense for yourself of what you like with each individual ingredient. It's, uh, it's not what some other chef that wrote a recipe likes. It's what you like. And the more you know the basic skills around that, the, the faster you're going to be able to, you know, make food for yourself all the time that you enjoy. Well, honey, since we don't have the heat on, I can bring her in. Come here, you. Come here, you. Come here, you. What happened over there? Huh? You get left out of the whole whole operation for too long? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. You're getting left out for too long. Yeah. Well. Well. We're not going to cook you up, though. We're not going to cook you up. No. We This is where we make her baby food, though. We make it right here. We make your food right here, don't we? Yeah. Oh, you don't like to be on camera? Oh, yeah. well, she does. You're just like mommy. Yeah. Cutie. Much happier over here. Back in the game. Hmm? So, two minutes left? Yeah, until uh, till the end of the, till 12 o'clock? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, well, I'm sure we took a few extra minutes here and there, like transitioning um, between our our moves and stuff, but um, you're pretty much in a, in a place where you're at the, you're at the finish line. You just need to finish cooking up everything that's on the stove top and everything that's in the oven. So when your timer goes off or what's the least uh, needs to get cooked, then pull those items. Um, you shouldn't really even have to stop cooking on the stovetop to pull those items. They're very likely going to be done. But if you need to get really engaged in what's in your stove, then turn off what's going on on your stovetop. 
um, and get involved in what's going on in your oven. And uh, hopefully you're, you're kicking butt and taking names out there with your meal prep and, and feeling like it's starting to really come to life um, for yourself. Uh, Will you be doing a Q&A after this? Yes, we will. It's, if there's questions, um, we will definitely uh, stick around. I mean, it's um, it's just basically from, from the time you finish cooking, it's about cleaning up your kitchen um, while things cool, and then it's about packing things. Um, and, you know, ideally you, you, you get away from the whole cooking event with a clean kitchen, everything packed, your, your fridge is, is tidy, your kitchen is back to one, um, back to square one, and, and it's in a good place so that all of this is done for you for the week, and now it's just about uh, heating up your meals. So that's my my little reminder that um, I might be pulling something, you know, that didn't need a full 15 minutes. Um, while you have the thing open, you can kind of poke test in there and see are like, you know, your sweet potatoes, are they done or do they still need a little bit more? You, you want the fork to just go into it nice and easy. Um, that's how you know that it's done. Uh, but that's, you don't want it to be just goes right through it like it's mush, right? So um, we're at the noon uh, time. It's been two hours of active cooking. Hopefully you're, you're at or near the finish line. Uh, love to hear from you um, how it went. Any questions you have, um, any any thoughts you might have on the whole operation? I'm going to be uh, sending out a survey, um, which I do hope that you'll fill out for me, and and there'll be a discount um, included for the uh, cook along course. And I'm very hopeful that you'll want to continue on and and go and start to learn how to do this uh, at more advanced levels and do it while watching uh, while cooking along with actual ingredients. Um, in the uh, the Tim Belt cook along course, and you do too. You're very happy with how this turned out, huh? You're ready to you're ready to get mommy and daddy back full time, their full attention. So uh, we'll hang out for a uh, um, you know a few minutes here and see if any questions come in. Uh, but maybe you guys are very busy finishing up your uh, your cook. I would mention that it's a good idea to let your um, your stuff cool down before putting it in the fridge. Mm -hmm. So you don't overwork your fridge. Yeah. So my, um, my wife is saying that um, letting your ingredients cool down before you put them in the fridge uh, makes it so that your refrigerator doesn't have to do a lot more work to cool the food down. So just let it come down to room temperature before you pack it up. Also, it's much easier to handle, you know, and to, you know, if you do decide you want to actually portion them out into individual meal containers and make complete meals, it's much easier to do that with stuff that's at room temperature than very hot. What I suggest you do with that time while you're waiting for your food to cool, is stick with it and keep cleaning, you know, just get the place cleaned up or, if you're, um, you know, exhausted from uh, from this two hours of work, um, then just take 15 minutes, take a break, you know, sit down, cool your heels, have a drink, do whatever you do, and uh, and then come back when everything's cool, and you can pack up and then clean up in a nice, you know, easy manner. You know, you don't want to make this any harder on yourself than 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 it is, but um, but you do want to take the time still to get. Uh, everything packed and get cleaned up and stuff so it's not hanging over your head all all week right yeah victory victory <laughs> yeah we did it another meal prep in the can we still have to do our meal prep we don't always do ours on Sunday we do it whenever we need more food because we do it about uh, five days at a time. So sometimes we do ours on Monday. Sometimes we do it Tuesday. Most times we do it on a Saturday or a Sunday. Um, but uh, once you have it down to two hours, you can actually just do it on a Monday night. You know, You'd be surprised 
uh, you can actually crank it out from like 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Sneak it in while everybody's off to bed or, you know, everything's quieted down. Um, when it's a legit just two hours, you can, you can spring to action um, and, and take it on. When you feel like it's going to be three, four hours, you're, you really are then trying to put your whole day aside for it. And that's, um, that's a recipe for giving up on meal prep in, in total. You don't want to give your whole life over to it. The whole point of doing meal prep is to save time for yourself and to set yourself up with uh, good healthy eats. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll take a, uh, we'll let, we'll let things, uh, um, well, we can, we can uh, stop the broadcast and just stick around for a few and a half, or no, I guess maybe because I'll answer on camera. Right. You can answer them through the comment section also. Yeah. Okay. Should we sign off and uh, let people give us questions and post photos to us later? Yeah. 12.04. Yeah. What do you think? Eat lunch. Eat what you made for us here. <laughs> <laughs> celery. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna whip up a nice batch of celery for us. Yeah. Well, good. So um, I guess we're we're gonna sign off on the uh, the broadcast. Um, this has been quite an experience. I've never tried this before, where I'm just talking for two and a half hours without cooking. Um, hopefully, uh, you did a lot of cooking and you got a lot out of it. Um, and uh, I'm hoping that I'll see you in the, uh, the actual cook along course and that you'll respond to our survey and that you had a lot of fun. Blair writes, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to need a lot more experience to make more interesting meals, but I'm sure signing up for the classes will help with that. Thanks. Blair. Thanks, Blair. <laughs> Thanks, Blair. Um, and we will be at our computer here for another hour to um, answer questions and uh, go forth and, and meal prep mastery. Woo! Bye-bye.